Hi, my name is David Renton from West College Scotland, formerly Recare, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about what we do up here. Um, we're an FE college, um, we've recently merged with two colleges to become West College Scotland, and we're now the second biggest FE college in Scotland. I primarily lecture and teach um, games development, um, which is not always as fun as it sounds, but it is also quite a bit of fun too. We get to play with these things quite a lot, which is good. Um, we make use of uh, C Sharp as our primary la uh, programming language. Um, we use X and A for the games engine for that. Um, we're looking at things like Mono Game in future as well, um, and Touch Develop. Um, you can see our computer games lab here. We've got mostly Windows 7 PCs. We also have Xboxes and Connects and uh, a lot of technology that we make use of. Um, most of my students are aged between 16 and 21. The average age probably being about 17 or 18. Um, the students come through here and they progress on to university from us. Uh, I also teach quite a lot of schools classes. Quite a few schools are sending these students to us to do games development. Um, and those students are aged between about 13 and 17. Each year on our HNC graded unit, uh, we make a computer game, funnily enough. And it's a ABC grade to get for that, and it's also team-based, which is quite good because that's the way it is in industry when you're making games, it's in a team. So the former team of four and five, they have a team leader, they have a, a programmer, an artist, a designer, and they work together to create a game. Um, the past four years, we've tied up with a local primary school to become a client for us, and also a focus group, and also ultimately a judge as well to judge the games and give feedback at the end. This has gone really well. Um, this year we asked them for a theme and they came back with us with Healthy Living. So RHN students got into their groups and they came up with ideas about Healthy Living. Most of those ideas were around about uh, the idea of healthy eating, but we did have some other ideas as well, like games about brushing your teeth and games about avoiding germs and that kind of thing. Around about um, February we actually took our students out to uh, Lockfield and they presented their ideas to the students, as you can see here. We also then discussed it with them in groups, with about 70 primary six students, and they got some really useful feedback, and it really encouraged our students by how enthusiastic the school children were about the ideas, as you can see here. Um, and they took those feedback back, and it really actually encouraged the rest of the group as well. You can see here some of the artwork produced by our students here. These are actually, sorry, the Lockfield primary students, I should say. Our students took these and they actually scanned them in and used them in quite a lot of the games. Um, so you see it really en engaged the primary school, made them feel part of the process as well, especially when they came back in and actually played the games and saw some of the games in action. Around about May the games were complete and they came in and actually played them as you can see here. And you can see the look of concentration on their faces as they're playing and enjoying the games. And there's the winning team. The, the school pupils actually voted online at the end, um, judging our games on different criteria such as gameplay, graphics, um, and all these different categories. And this is the winning team called Fruit Factory, which was the only game that actually had a two-player mode, I think. It won because of gameplay. So this is the game that was won in the end. And you'll actually notice as you're watching this that some of the fruit here is the stuff that the students produced that you saw over on the desk. So we actually scanned and incorporated that into the game. This is Call of Fruity, which was one of the most complex games that was created this year. It even included a level designer. And you can see here we've got their main character, which they drew. And they've got fruit, which they've got to collect. They've got to try and avoid the fries and the donuts and the things like that that are trying to stop them. So if I eat a donut, that's bad. And these things here are falling down. So this is an example of the kind of games that our students made. So some of them really were quite high quality and I would say overall the project really did motivate our students to do their best. The way the project had an impact on our students is working with the school children really motivate them um, as they wanted to please them. They saw how, uh, how into it they were, how uh, enthusiastic they were and it really made a difference. Also having a set day when these kids were coming in to play the games and test them really helped them to get the games done on time. Um, so I think it definitely improved the student outcome. We had a lot more A's and B's than we have in previous years. Um, 
and all the games were done in time as well, which would not have happened if we didn't have this deadline. Um, I think it also benefited the school children from Lockfield as well, um, in that they got to experience college life. They not only experienced computing when they came here, but they went to some other departments like care and beauty and experienced some of what they do there. So they got to experience a bit of uh, college life and opportunities that would be out there in, in the future for them. Um, and overall the project really was beneficial to both parties and a big success. Um, bye for now.